Oh, seven star citizens. Three twenty three has been in wave one for a little over a week now, which has given me a lot of opportunities to play it. And one thing that I've gotten to play that wasn't in the patch until pretty much it hit wave one was engineering. And oh my, is this going to just completely change? how star citizen works forever before we do get started on engineering and all my opinions on it things that i would like to see from it all that stuff i do want to let you guys know that i'm going to be at dreamhack melbourne all three days in like a week and a half time uh i'm going to be there with a beard of oz pretty much the entire weekend so if you see us come say hi and talk star citizen with us because there's not that many of us in australia and, and there needs to be more <laughs> so engineering we've been waiting for years for there to be more and more reasons for there to be multiplayer aspects to ship combat. There's of course turrets and turrets are a super cool aspect of gameplay, but that's it right now pretty much other than maybe someone moving cargo. And we've kind of been waiting for engineering gameplay, this kind of aspect to exist in one form or the other for a really long time. Over the last two years, CIG have been showing us little snippets of how they want engineering to go and how they want larger ships to be a little bit more in depth than they are currently, whether that's having the room system and being able to control rooms from engineering paddles, being able to like remove the oxygen from rooms, fire propagation, and you know, having to actually use fire extinguishers in your own vehicles, whatnot. All of that stuff has been stuff that they've been showing us. The biggest one of which has been essentially power. How does power route through your ship? How are you going to deal with power when you're in a combat situation? Where are you going to move it? Uh, where's the repair aspect gonna come in? All that sort of stuff. With 323, we are getting an experimental mode in Arena Commander for engineering. You would have seen this if you, you know, read any of the roadmap roundups or you watch any of the ISCs, that sort of stuff. Well, it is in 323 Wave 1 right now with one ship particularly, which is the A2. They have said in the monthly report uh, from this past month that they've already got 10 ships on the way for engineering, but for 323, we're going to be seeing the A2 and everything that it includes. And this is that. Welcome to the future of multi-crew gameplay in Star Citizen. So to explain it very simply, you have your power generators, you have your power plants. They are sending power through all of those green lines that connect between different fuses. Now you may know these as relays. I personally am gonna keep calling them fuse boxes and you'll, you'll see why in a second. By bringing power through all of these sections, they can power up your weapons, your radar, your cockpit as a whole, which can get very interesting, your shield generators, pretty much anything on your ship that needs power is operated by these. Even on the A2 itself, your bomb launchers, of course, need power. All of those different areas seem to correspond with certain uh, fuse boxes. A lot of it hasn't been explained to us by CRG, so we've had to do a lot of sort of self-discovery, and some of the things that I say today may be a little bit inaccurate because hey, there's just so much to this and the possibilities of what could be in this patch uh, in regards to power could be much more than I realize. To generalize, the fuse boxes are kind of like Sea of Thieves repair system. If you've ever played it, you know, you get onto your ship in Sea of Thieves, you come under attack, and then when cannonballs hit your ship, creates a hole in your ship that you need to repair with wood. It's essentially the same thing right now, except instead of repairing them with wood, you're putting fuses back into those locations. That does not repair your actual modules, but it makes sure that there is still power going towards them. So what we sort of noticed is we went into a couple of combat situations and you will usually have someone looking at this screen to know where is power going to, where can I turn power off from, just to make sure that power is going to the correct locations, where am I missing fuses, and where can I put redundant fuses. And the reason I say that is because the fuse boxes, even though you only really need one fuse for that line of power to work, there is extra fuses that you can put there. And you can kind of think of those as like health for, for the fuses. The fuses themselves can get shot, by ballistics and it seems like a damage to the ship can also destroy the fuses but either way the fuses can be destroyed when that happens pretty much anything connected to that fuse will turn off no power is going to that location this is obviously really important because you have things like your radar where if your radar is turned off you can't use it anymore the ship is unable to target anything that is a big big deal right so that's a very important critical fuse that you need to make sure is always there or like the cockpit if you lose all of the cockpit fuses you can no longer fly the ship or operate any 
anything, really. <laughs> so you've got these sort of, on the A2 at least, you've got these sort of like extra special sections. It also seems like even though CRG have said that the health of the A2 is currently unbalanced to where they would like this to be, it does seem like a couple of critical points have more health than others. I would often lose the fuses in the main sort of fuselage of the A2 before I would lose them in either the cockpit or where the power plants are. So, you know, those are obviously the more critical places. One of them is where I get power. One of them is where I operate the ship. They would still get damaged. And especially the power plants themselves could definitely still be damaged by just general gameplay. But the fuses there tended to last longer than others. Could be a complete fluke. Could be entirely intentional. There's been a lot of different communication from CRG about how they want this to work and how they want this to be balanced, but that's an important thing to note. So what does this look like? Like I said, we did a bunch of tests and you would essentially have someone running around as the engineer. But at least in our tests, and to be fair, we didn't do like A2 versus A2 with all turrets active. But in our tests, they could essentially multi-role. They could co-pilot or they could, you know, go in the turret gunners until you were taking significant damage. Because pretty much the entire time while your shields are up, your fuses are okay. Obviously, once again, that may change. With ballistics, all of this is subject to change. But that role became genuinely important. And that is without a couple of major features being in for engineering. This is just us testing the power aspect of engineering. The, uh, the resource network, I believe is how they call it. When we introduce fire propagation, or when we introduce uh, repairing components, which we think will come up in a pretty soon build, all of the parts for that are there now, but we just can't do it in 3.23. That role becomes almost as important as the pilot. I would argue, you know, it, it, it's sort of one of those things of like, if you are hiring crew, you're probably likely going to want to hire your engineer the very second thing, right? Pilot engineer. And I think that's awesome. I think I think in its incredibly buggy state right now in wave one, in it's incredibly unfinished state with, you know, all those features that I mentioned coming out still, it does what I expected engineering to do. But there's a couple of things I want to mention as well. I've heard from some people saying that this is boring this type of gameplay is boring where you're just putting fuses and stuff in boxes. And like, yeah, of course it can be. But once again, multi-role and some of your jobs don't exist yet, like fire, like repairing. And so in my opinion, it's fantastic. I even know my wife is very, very excited to essentially play Sea of Thieves in Star Citizen. So it's very likely when she joins me for any sort of flight, she's gonna take the engineer role because she always ends up repairing our ships in uh, Sea of Thieves. Her choice, her choice. Now I do have some gripes. This is not a perfect system. And once again, some of these might be bugs. Some of these will get ironed out, but it's something that is happening right now in wave one. If your ship is flying even remotely maneuverably, as in your, your A2. The engineer has an absolute terrible time <laughs> looking at the UI. I think the UI in general is very easy to follow. Maybe some of the icons are a little bit smaller than I would like, and you know that it needs some polish, but in general, the UI is great. But if I can't see the UI because I'm constantly doing this when I'm trying to look at it, which you can see here from some of the footage that we took today, then that immediately becomes a straight up unfun mechanic. <laughs> that would suck. That's not where I want this to go. So I'm hoping that either we get a situation where you know, that aspect of force reactions is removed when you're locked into a screen. If they wanted to keep those force reactions, just give that screen a seat right <laughs> that could that could solve that problem of course but regardless that cannot happen it is terrible on the eyes it is an, an inevitability that your pilot is going to operate the ship in that way so something needs to change in that aspect in addition there is some stuff that i would like to see sort of added to create a little bit more depth with the gameplay that we have currently for engineering so right now all of the fuses are exactly the same literally exactly the same now we know that uh, you know components are going to be changing eventually <laughs> one day, right? We're going to get some new components again that will have different variations. But I would love to see sort of sub-component uh, fuses, kind of like how we have with mining gadgets, where you know the mining gadget can change a bunch of properties on the rock, so that when you go to mine it, it changes a bunch of things. If we could do that with fuses, that would be super cool. So as an example, you know maybe in one of your fuses that's in the the main fuselage. The, the main uh the main area at the top there of the a2 maybe you can have one that the fuse itself has like 20 percent more health or has some extra amount of survivability but as a cost of that it drains power from the the, the power generator as well 
the power plants. You bring that sort of stuff into it and it brings a lot more play, not only between the engineer, but the person that owns the vehicle. It's extra customization in what I would hope would be a really easy way. I guess it depends on how they've planned, however it works behind the scenes. I, I hope that that's something that they can do. But other than that, it doesn't need much more work. Maybe, you know, we did see some images of like possible things that might happen with components and whatnot in the future. I would imagine engineering could be in charge of overcharging different modules. Um, like I said, they're already gonna have a couple of other jobs with trying to get rid of fires, trying to repair items. So that could be very interesting. One other small little gripe that I had with it is like the fuses are clearly a resource on the ship. However, not really because <laughs> you can just, you know, you would just be able to go to a ship, open up one of the storages and just put like hundreds of these fuses in there. That sort of removes an aspect of it to me, but we're so early days in engineering that that may not be a problem in the future. It may not be as aggressive as I think it might, and so that might be fine. Re the resource may itself actually just be how many people do you have doing, doing engineering? How much time do you have to get to all these locations? The last thing I'll say, which is just an interesting thing because we're testing out the A2, is that the A2 is at this kind of weird spot where it feels like you need one and a half people to do the engineering. Um, at certain times and maybe that's kind of what they're going for is that like at certain times you know you need to call someone off a turret to give you a hand but I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that it's two levels one of the fuses is on the bottom level of the A2 and that's a really annoying place to get to it can take quite a lot of time but that also in addition to the fact that because you have the screen up in the cockpit the UI up in the cockpit it can be a lot easier when you are being fired out under stress for someone to stay on that screen and just tell you, you know, where to go. I need a fuse over here, fuse over here. In future, hey, there's a fire over here, go do that, whatever. The A2 is just in that sort of weird size range. So I would love to see this gameplay be tested on uh, something like a Constellation, which is presumably gonna have far fewer fuses. It's for the most part, with the exception of like the cargo deck, it's all one level. And so it would maybe give a better idea of what one engineer's job is but we are still so super early days that I don't think it matters too much. Uh, it's just, a, it's, it'd be a nice little thing to think about when we go forward and when we start seeing this actually being brought to live. But that's engineering. I think this is going to be the most impactful thing put into Star Citizen since probably like medical gameplay. And even then probably even, even higher to an extent. Because you can sort of see how this may translate to the really, really large ships, you know, these these massive uh, javelins and idrises and how that gameplay can evolve and it gets me so so excited for group gameplay which is what i'm always searching for in star citizen while still keeping the game fun because it's not too overly complicated yes if you liked the video, guys, make sure to give a like down below. Uh, subscribe if you want to see some more Star Citizen videos. And if you want to catch me live uh, when I stream all of these sort of things, I stream both over on Twitch and here on YouTube as well. So you guys can check out and um, watch out all the stuff that we do. Also, make sure to check out Answer the Call podcast with myself and Salty Mike. Um, I don't know what we're going to be talking about this week. I think that's likely going to have a lot to do with probably what gets announced in two to three hours time on the roadmap roundup i'm really desperately hoping that the freight elevators do not get removed because we got a friendly wager going there but that's all for me thank you very much guys for watching i'll see you in the next video